Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Monday Night Inking. I missed last week and I apologize for that, so it's good to get back on the, back on the old schedule. So I'll give it a minute while some people show up. But yes, I'm doing this little cowboy man. And I have frisket laid down on these, um, but I'm going to rub that off and have the amazing star field, hopefully, uh, once people start showing up. But in the meantime, I will start working. Let's see. Okay, guys. I apologize, this is such a tiny piece. I usually try to do uh, larger parts for live stream just because it's so small. All right, so difficult to see at this size, but everything else I'm doing right now is very secretive, so I can't do it on the stream. There he is, the man himself. Dude, I keep forgetting. Do you go by William or Bill? In my head, it's Bill, but I don't feel bad I forgot. I want to get it wrong. Sleeve there. This is Bill. Okay. That's what I thought, but I always uh, second guess myself. Here we go. We're starting to get some people here. Not sure why it's taking so long for people to show up this one. Hopefully, you all are just busy. Get these proper sleeve wrinkles. Yeah, the lighting on this one has been really, really fun. Honestly, I've really enjoyed this so far. Just the penciling of it. hand in full contrast. That's going to look nice. And sort of the bluffs in the background. We got 45 waves. Hello. Welcome to the stream. This looks like it's going to be a nice quiet one. I don't know if this is a normal problem to have, but I really struggle with hats. Uh, you, you would be embarrassed for me to see how many times I redrew this hat. And it's just in silhouette, like it's the simplest version. And it still went way too long trying to get the hat just right. Bill says, I'll hopefully one day figure out how my phone and apps work. You know what? I hope that someday too. <laughs> I hope that for myself and everyone in the world. But I was kind of laughing, like, oh, accidental dials are just, like, the most first world of first world problems. I got a little bit of lint on there. There you go. So I've started using, um, you may notice this brush is a little smaller. It's the same brand, the Kalinsky Sable, but it is actually a number one instead of a number two which I have noticed uh, some artists I admire using. 
And there's, so far, no disadvantage. It gets that very fine line work that I like. Um, actually, certain kinds of down rendering, like the, the ruler rendering I do with it, are a little more difficult, but I'm sure it's just learning a slightly different technique. But otherwise, I think I will stick with it because they're just as good as the two and cheaper because it's less hair. go. Bridge over the flames joined. Hello, hello. entirely in solid shadow. There we go. So anyway, um, for context, this is one of a number of smaller projects I've been working on on the side lately. Um, this is going to be one of six illustrations I'm going to do for uh, Build a Geist's upcoming Kickstarter, but we will have more info on that as we get closer to it. But in the others oh, first get there, hang on. But in the meantime, I'm really enjoying the the sort of different headspace this type of spot illustration is. Stress is very different things than comics tend to. And I do genuinely, I genuinely like Westerns and I've never gotten to uh, really do sort of cowboy art before. So this has been fun. All right, we got some people, so I'm gonna take this frisket off because that's cool to watch. It's a beautiful starry night. That's a bit much there. Okay, that looks pretty nice. Some areas definitely need some fine tuning like around in here and these, the, the streaking needs to be refined, but that's easy enough to do moving forward. I'm gonna finish his containment line here. Magic, yes, indeed. <laughs> it's always a treat to get to work with Frisket, especially Frisket stars. Okay, do 
I need to put the boot maybe just a little bit just to get a little extra cowboyness in there. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Actually, I gotta finish the gun belt here. go and that's all gonna be black let me just get the ground laid in here interacting and intersecting lines are always important to me to get taken care of as soon as possible oh, I'm losing opacity there a little bit the perspective on this one was fun because this this headstone is technically to a different perspective than everything else I tilted it a little just for for visual interest, so that means it has to have a different horizon and vanishing point on its own. So there's actually quite a bit of perspective going on in this this uh, small tableau. Alright, let's finish this layer of the ground, and then I will go to the headstone. And stubby little... desert grasses there. Night scenes are always an interesting challenge. Like everyone has to find their own shorthand for how they're going to handle like literal physical darkness. Because if you did it honestly, there would just be nothing to see in this medium where you have option black and option white. There's this tiny line out here. Another tier of ground. More tiny grasses. All right, that looks pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna spend some time on this headstone. This rough stone texture will be fun to sort of create a rougher edge, not like a paper, uh, paper clean edge on this. I'd like to do a sort of a double line, which creates a sort of a rounding effect and obviously do it with a lot of squiggles and texture here. So let's see some rendering. It feel like carved stone. There we go. Indiana Jones and the Vampire of Prague. <laughs> I would watch that so hard. Man, now I just really wish that existed. turning in the front as well this line is going to get bumped up for sure just a containment line but uh, we can save that for the end when we have a better sense of everything that's going on which you probably know by now I do if you're a regular carved out. There we are. Okay. So this I didn't pencil in the roughness of the stone, but it's easy enough. This is 
going to be mostly in shadow anyway. Like this whole edge is going to disappear. I'm very excited about that because I have not historically had the courage to do things like that. Just drop things straight into shadow. Yeah, so far this has been a very fun piece. All right. Let's see. So we're going to get, we have a little bit of sort of the ground lumping up on the edge of the pedestal there. So let's put that in so we can get the lighting. That's unshadowed, so let's see here. Oop. Point it up, there we go. All right, just a little of that. A little bit of grass to bring it forward. And then this is just going to be sort of a feathered render. So let's see. The brush is tired now. I've been inking all day. So let's see what I can get it to do. That's not bad. That works. Bill says, I'm excited as heck for this. Also a basket case. Don't worry about it. It'll all be fine. You look back on it and see that it was worth it. I remember my Kickstarter, like I was a nervous wreck just thinking about how much there was to do, but you just do things one at a time and they all get done. Okay, so now we have this cast shadow on the ground. Again, this is going to be on that nubbly earthy ground. So let's not lose sight of that texture. I always forget when there's like a large, completely black area. I don't, I don't need the scrap paper. I could just do that, but it's just force of habit, I guess. that. Excellent. So let's lay in where the shadow edge starts here. It's mostly up on that first line, but a little bit of breaking will really help keep it textural and rounded. This large black area, I'm going to get an old brush just because there's no reason in aging your current brush for something like this. Let's fill that all in. Actually, let me do over here first because that's the sensitive part. I don't want to lose any of the stars that come right up to the edge because that's what's going to help define the edge. There. There. 
Purge Over the Flame says, I've spent the last five minutes picturing what an Indiana Jones Hellboy mashup might be like. I almost like, well, a lot, lot of, a lot of Nazi punching. I can definitely tell you that much. Um, don't they even have like a similar, don't they both have like some quip about I hate Nazis or something? I mean, not like that's, <laughs> not like that's a stretch or that makes them special now that I think about it. Should be a pretty standard response. I don't know if they'd get along though. Like that's one of those things where if you cross over two, you know, two protagonists that are too independent, nothing gets done. Could be cool, especially if it had a Temple of Doom atmosphere. That would definitely suit itself more to Hellboy. I'm starting to see it. Maybe if they already knew how to work together. Indiana Jones and the BPRD would be interesting. How say graphics? Uh, let's see. Before I forget, well, let me put this in now and then I'll go back in and do some white grass. Because that's the fun part. Assuming I can get the white to work, sometimes it misbehaves. up for a second while I pop out my white ink. See what I can get going here. Whew, it's warm in here. So I managed to like overexert my legs on a different workout yesterday. So this morning I went on a run and my legs were incredibly tender. So I was doing like a pathetic penguin run, <laughs> but now they're still like sort of they're wincing as I stand here working. Yes, son, Meathead Mondays. <laughs> I love it. You guys are the best. Yeah, see, it's not quite. White ink by its nature, for whatever reason, I've never fully understood this, um, doesn't glide very well. I don't really want to do more than that. I get distracted. Although this one looks kind of on its own. Here we go. That's better. Let me get the black black grass on the other side. That was irrationally hard to say. Little stubby desert grasses. Okay. Same in screen printing. Why didn't you be a beast? Yeah, like in theory, it's such a great idea. And then you go to use it and it's like, oh, this is a pain. I really love um, these guys. Where's the name on them? Oh, there we go. Yeah, the Singo Uniball white pens. But... Um, they're limited in that they don't have the line weight of a brush. You know, you sort of just do a, a flat line. All right, let me fill in some more of this black. See how it ends up working with the sky there. Back to my old brush.
coming along nicely. Yeah, this is gonna be a nice, nice spooky nighttime shot. And especially when you're working with heavy black like this, you don't really know. Like I have a pretty good sense, I've been doing this for a while now, but you still don't really know how it's gonna look in, you know, if you're comparing it to the pencils, cause like this is what it looked like in the pencils. And you can sort of like, you know, scribble it in and get a sense of what it would look like. But uh, for these large areas, that would just be silly. I think for the most part, you just kind of got to trust your your instincts when working with a lot of black like this. But you figure it out. But the upside of that is you get this fun surprise when it comes time to actually ink. Because you get to actually see it for the first time in a way that doesn't necessarily apply to less black heavy pencils. Let's see, Adam says, I've been going through the volumes of Batman black and white and I've come to the conclusion that I spend more time on the art when there's no color. I would agree, dude, like I love black and white art. Like I'm sure I've talked about this before and obviously I'm biased because I do this, but still I think, uh, I think it definitely does hold the eye a lot longer. It's a very primitive sort of uh, function of the human eye that we just seek out high contrast like that. Yes, I'm looking forward to having more uh, more cred and more say uh, and uh, in upcoming jobs, I guess. And it would be awesome to be able to do some black and white stuff in the future. Let's see, what else did you say? I honestly think facial features especially pop more in black and white. That goes for movies too. I would not, yeah, I would not argue with that. All right, let's see. Let me get some of these other little headstones in there. Actually, I should get his shadow in there. I have a list as always, but as always, I am only half following it. Let's see. So the ground, the ground is going to have a lot to say about this. I needed his shadow to loop, that these, that their shape sort of create a loop and that this shape sort of create a loop. So there's a couple, a couple of uh, different shapes happening in this composition. One thing I've been working on lately is being more literal with my cast shadows instead of just sort of scribbling to make sure I actually recreate the shape uh, of the figure casting the shadow in an appropriate way, which is surprisingly hard at times. Um, Otomo is really good at that. Those of you who know I have been... Uh, rereading Akira lately. So that's one of the things I definitely not even picked up from him, but realized I really needed to buckle down on and do better because he's so good at that. His cast shadows are just like exact replicas of the character in a different appropriate perspective. just skip that. That would be a bit much. Okay, let me do this guy. So we got more stone texture here. All right, the underside. Well, I'm wait. This can be G, just black. There we go. 
Man, that's nice. That's subtle, but that really makes a difference. from the moon here for the lighting this is not a focal point so it doesn't need that much okay gotta clean this that inking is crisp in the best sense of the word thank you snow draws or is it snow? Snow's draws, excuse me. I appreciate that. It's good to have good tools. Also, I'm pretty sure Crisp only has good senses to the word. Have you ever, like, you know, like, have you ever eaten an apple that was, like, I don't know. I guess that's, that's a bad example. Have you ever encountered anything that you described as crisp and the person was like, oh, I'm sorry. Um, waiter, this food is too crisp. I'm so sorry. Please don't tell my manager. Sorry, I'm not making fun of you. Just being a grammar nerd. Alright. Oh, so this one does also cast a shadow that way. So I, Well, it didn't really need that line because it's going to end right there, but... Desert grass there. Let's render some ground shapes. A little more up here. This light out here. go so this one is gonna be black and this one is gonna be black so let's put this in the best Adam says crispy fries are the best yeah but they're also really good when they're like still really hot and soft inside I think the takeaway is most fries are good Hey, Mr. Hackadoo! Back in the stream. Alright, here we go with this tiny headstone. Hey to you too! Hope you're doing well. Hope everyone is continuing to stay safe and healthy. There's a very loud motorcycle outside the window for a minute there. Soggy fries are the best. Oh, we've got contention now. There's arguing in the feed. Can I be the mediator just by saying I like all kinds of fries? Oh, sorry. Hang on. I punched my phone. All right, that's a different angle, but whatever. All right, while I've got this nice point, let me do this background bluff. Very small lines. Okay. 
I'm not quite emotionally prepared to do that rendering, but let me get the rest of the bluff here. <laughs> that is also true about the fries, I assume. I, uh, you know, it's like pizza. Even bad pizza is still pretty awesome. Okay. So this one can go completely black. So let me fill those in real quick because, uh, frankly, we're running out of things to do, or at least things I'm comfortable with doing a little bit compromised, especially on live stream. So this might be a short one. Go. Yeah, that's gonna look really good when that fills in. I love the the aspect of shadow and highlighting where you really only get like separate untouching parts, but you can still read the shape. Good light play is just like mm, chef's kiss. Oh yeah. That's going to be really nice. Yeah. That come out nice. All right, let me do this other one. Let me do it upside down so I don't smear. You can see there's still some shiny parts on there. You put down a ton of ink at once, they'll definitely get a little bit of a puddle. Which is fine as long as you're careful with it. go some nice graveyardy feels love the contrast absolutely i love it too it's a good feeling all right let me get this foreground guy and i think i might call it a night then at least for the stream i don't want to compromise the the quality of this piece and there's a few few delicate things remaining that I'm going to need uh, better spacing for This one is a nice foreground object, so it has no visual information at all outside of black, as opposed to like this one, which gets some detail. Star wasn't round. Okay, let's go back to here. 
slightly stony texture there. Okay. Actually, I think I'll also do the, the cast shadow on the ground too, because that'll look really good. I still got the old brush. Let me do the cast shadow on the ground. I think that'll look pretty cool when that's done as well. Such a natural pose. Thank you. Yeah, it took some work. Uh, actually, let me see. Where's the thumbnail? The thing I usually spend the longest on, honestly, is uh, a natural gesture, a believable stance. Where did I put the thumbnail? Let me show you guys. I don't know where I put it. Is it still up here? Oh, here it is. Okay, yeah. So here's the sort of the thumbnail for this same thing. Um, as you can see, there's some some considerable improvements in the figure, but I got the sense of the uh, sort of the angle and the weight and the stepping forward gesture in particular, that's a real change in weight. When all your weight is not distributed evenly between feet, which honestly it usually isn't, um, you gotta think about your your center line and where it bends to support the weight of the body in a natural feeling way. So that's a long, that's a long way around to saying thank you. I appreciate you noticing that. It's not the sort of thing that, uh, that really stands out in a final piece, but it makes a big difference. It's not the sort of thing people tend to notice when it's good, they just notice it when it's bad one of those things. All right, there were some other comments coming. Uh, is this one for a comic? No, so this one, I was just talking about it right before you showed up. Uh, this one is for a, uh, an illustrated short story that I am doing for Bill DeGeest, who is uh, usually on this stream. I don't know if he's still here, um, but he is gonna be kickstarting a collection of short stories he wrote with different illustrators on them, and I am doing two of his stories. And this is his cowboy zombie story. See, making connections now. This is a cowboy. What's this place? Dun dun dun. 
his other one. The other one that I'm illustrating is like a Conan the Barbarian type story. So I got to work in two mediums that I really enjoy, or genres rather. Milo Mito Art waves. Hello, Milo. Welcome to the stream. Sorry, this one is mostly just watching me color things black. It was the most, uh, the most I was able to show because I am working on another project right now, or, or a short comic rather. Um, by the shadow play writer, but I am not allowed to show any of it yet. It is for uh, an upcoming anthology. All right. Since y'all have been so good to stick around, I am going to start filling this in. It's going to look real cool. Uh, oh, I did. Thinking for a minute, I didn't have a window of light on the neck there, but I totally did. Mm, that got a little sloppy. Oh, he's still here. You're very welcome, Bill. This is a this was very fun. You hear all the happy sounds I'm making working on this. Normally something that small wouldn't be an issue, but since it's right on the moon there, you want it to be super clean. Was listening to uh just like ambient mixes of of like cowboy music <laughs> this morning when i was penciling this all right so i'm not sure if this right here is going to turn out having the underside of the brim all black and this rim lighting on the face because it wouldn't technically be there but we'll see how it looks and i can always fill it all in if i need to might work that might work fortunately it's the sort of thing you won't know until you finish the whole thing so now by association my whole head is full of like horse riding dusty cowboy music as I'm working on this I programmed my brain for it now. Ah, oh, it's gonna look so nice. Oh, look at that, we've already done almost an hour. 
Every time I think something is gonna be cut short, it ends up being normal length. Gotta find some way to monetize that. Not sure what I'm gonna do with the belt. I think I'm going to put like studs on it or something that would catch the light all the way around. That could be cool. So I won't completely disappear it quite yet. Some spaghetti western sound effects would be nice, yeah. None of them like are appropriate to like this spooky night scene though. I just keep thinking of like horse sounds and yelling at horses and you know, pistols going off and whooping. But this is like a creeping around a spooky graveyard at night. Oops, sorry about that. Hey, Wheeler. Hi, Master Meath. Well, hello. Always good to have you back. Man, my legs hurt. <laughs> Why I did this to myself. You guys are getting it at an angle. There he is, properly flat. But I'll tell you what, to keep something back, to keep you all interested, I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream now. Uh, I need to uh, dedicate a little more, an undivided attention to wrapping up some of the details here. But um, thank you all for stopping in and I will post more about this project uh, as it progresses. So everyone have a great evening.